PWW. And we pray that God has been good to you all week long. Thank God for who he is and what he's doing in our lives. And let's begin with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for your word, God. And we ask that you reveal your word to us. And God, let us apply this lesson to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. So today, tonight we're on lesson number three, Job's trial. Amen. And this will be a very brief lesson because we know Job and we are very familiar with his uh, story. But just give you what God gave me as we go forth in this lesson on tonight. Uh, the aim of this lesson is to show that suffering of Christians is not because we live wrong, but because we live right. Amen. And when we talk about Job, we know that Job is one of the most recognizable men in the Bible when it comes to suffering, especially when it comes to suffering and living justly, living right. And when you read our lesson text coming from Job 2, 1 through 6, and let's read that right quick. Again, Job 2, 1 through 6, it says, Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came along also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence to come cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou moved against me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man had, will he give his life, give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Amen. The word of God is blessed. And, you know, we talk about Job's life all the time. And I like how our book puts it. Uh, Job suffered because God actually was bragging on Amen. God was bragging on him. And, and and as a result of God bragging on him, devil, the devil, like, uh, if you take the hedge about him, you know, uh, you know, he'll curse you to your face. You know, skin for skin. All a man got, he'll, he'll, you know, he'll turn his back on you. You know, and this is what blesses me about Job, because when we go to Job 13 and 15, Job, he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. Now, look at Job. You know, Job lost everything. <clears throat> he lost his family, lost his fortune, lost his fitness, lost his friends, you know, lost his health. And none of us get out of this life un untouched by trouble. But in spite of what we go through, what we learn from Job and his trials is that we must trust God. Because he tells us in the words in John 16, 33, these things have I spoken unto you that in me, Jesus Christ, we can have peace in the world. Because in this world, we're going to have tribulations. But be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. So when we suffering, when suffering comes into your life, it's going to do one of two things. It's going to drive you away from God. Because your troubles gonna either make you or you it's gonna break you, or your troubles will drive you towards God. Your suffering will sort of drive you towards God. You know, if you if we get to the point where we understand that God is in control of our lives, then we can rest in the knowledge of knowing that He's in control even in the midst of my suffering. And that's what Job understood. He was like, I I know I'm going through. You know, I know I'm facing some stuff right now, but it ain't because I'm doing wrong, you know, and, 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 and he had to face this. He had to face this from his wife, you know, his wife backslide, tell him to curse God and die. You know, his friends, they come over, they start accusing him of sinning, and they like, man, you done, done something wrong. You know, that's why, you know, you going through what you're going through. So you got to think about how Joe felt. That was, he already suffering. Now he got to suffer with his wife and his friends. But Joe had a relationship with God. You know, he had a relationship with God. And and when you 
got a relationship with God we can lean on, which I told y'all. Romans 8, 28, probably going to be a constant verse. We probably going to hear that every week. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. You know, even though Job was going through, let's look at his life. You know, even though he was going through, he worshiped God. When you go to Job 1, 20, it says, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down on the, on the ground and worshiped. Now, that's not a reaction that most people show when they're suffering. So we got to be devoted to worshiping God even when we're going through trials and tribulations. Job had trials, you know, but he declared his faith in God. In that very first, next verse in Job 1.21, he said, And naked came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When we love it, we you know we love when the Lord gives to us, but we don't like when God take away, you know. But the same God who gives is the same God who also takes things away. So God shouldn't have to please us all the time to get us to serve Him. We gotta understand whatever it is that we have is because of God. In our memory verse, even though all this was going on, and this is how close of a relationship He had with God. And that's the kind of, that's why we got to be close to God when it comes to our trials and our suffering. Even though he was going through all of these trials, all of these tribulations, I remember verse Job 1.22, it says, In all of this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. But what he did was, he he declared, he showed his confidence in God's purpose for whatever it is he's going through. And he realized, you know, his understanding of what's going on is limited. Like I, I don't know why this, why what's happening is happening. That's why again we walk by faith and not by sight. Hebrews eleven and six tells us, but without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So he waited on God. He know that he didn't understand it all. So he put his eyes on God. And that's what we have to do as believers. Hebrews 12 and 2 tells us, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So I'm here to encourage you today with this brief summary of the lesson. You know, we take Job's life in this very familiar passage. But what we learn from this lesson, what God gave me to give you and encourage you, is that keep your eyes on God, keep your mind on God, and keep God in your heart. Right now may be a hard time. Right now might be a time of suffering and trials. Right now may be a time of heartache. Right now, now might be a time where you just don't understand why things are happening the way they're happening. But it is the perfect time for you to trust God. It's the perfect time for you to be the light that he's ordained you to be. It's the perfect time to experience God in a brand new way. And Mark 9, 23 tells us, Jesus said unto him, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. So I'm here to encourage you. If we find ourselves falling short in the area of faith and belief, we ask God to strengthen our faith, help us to trust him in spite of what it is that we're facing right now. When we see Job again, it's encouraging because trials are going to be a part of a Christian life. You know, trials are a part of this life. And to, to, to think God don't want his people to suffer or that we don't have to go through it is wrong uh, according to the word of God. Because he suffered in the flesh, you know, and he told us it'll be different if he didn't. But he told us in this world we're going to have tribulations. So, you know, God not only gave him confidence, his relationship with God not only gave Job confidence, but it helped him to keep his faith in Christ. So, I'm going to encourage you today, stay close to God, you know, get closer to him. So, therefore, when we find ourselves in trials, tribulations, an encouraging thing, going back to the beginning of the lesson, if you know you live in saved, you know you live in holy, maybe we going through because God is bragging on us. You know, we love people to brag on us. We thank God for him being who he is and, and and thinking so much of Job to be like, uh, you can try him. You know, you can try him. He he ain't going to turn his back on me. And I, I want to be like that. We should all want to be like that. But we get to the point where God is bragging on us because he has such a close relationship with us. And no matter what we go through, he knows we're not going to turn our back on him. Amen.
Amen. So we thank God for this word. We thank God for the lesson on today. Uh, we are the Bethel Church of God in Christ, Jane D. Louisiana. Thank God for our pastor, Pastor Donald Douglas, our first lady. Thank God for my wife and all of you, the subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, hey, I need y'all to do me a favor. We almost at 100. We almost at 100 subscribers. And I praise God. And I pray, God, that we reach that plateau by the end of the year. I thank God for all of your support. Thank God for all of you joining us. Thank God for everyone who is subscribed. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the page. Help us to hit that 100 mark before the end of the year. Hey, Amen. When we thank God, you know, that the, we pray that these lessons and those services and all this are truly helping you. You know, this was birthed out of the pandemic just for our little local, for our local assembly, for our, our church body. But uh, God just placed it on our hearts to continue on. And, and we thank God for the avenue. Thank God for this avenue to reach and be able to teach and preach and uh, worship with you all. Amen. So let's end with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this word, God. We do ask that you help us to trust you in spite of our trials, in spite of our suffering, God. Help us to realize that, God, we are living holy. And we may be going through because you're bragging on us. Oh, God, you you know we won't turn our back. And we thank you for keeping us. We thank you for sustaining us. And we pray for each and every individual that comes across this video. Give them a prayer request, God, known and unknown. And God, we give you glory on and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Amen. So today, before we leave, because I don't think I gave y'all a question last week. So before we leave, we're going to leave you with question number two. In our book, it says, do we always suffer because of our faith? Amen. That's a good one. And we thank God for this lesson. Thank God for the word of God. And we love you. We're praying for you. You pray for us. We'll see you.